this is the video some of you have been waiting on and this is like my third attempt at doing this video. I had done two last week and I wasn't pleased with how they came out. So however this one come out, it's going to get posted. First thing first, before I do my makeup, most times I normally prep my face and it depends on how I'm feeling in the moment. And prepping for me involves using this spatula here to kind of just exfoliate and then I cleanse and for cleansing I normally use a Neutrogena soap and sometimes I have this rose water cleanser that I use it's a cleanser and toner in one Melisha had asked me about toners and this is the one I'm currently using I will take a pick and attach it here initially I was very consistent with it but I'm gonna drop off a shape big time but I'm gonna fix that soon Pardon my nails, guys, by the way. My daughter did them for me yesterday and somehow, some way, while braiding my hair, it's stripped. So that's what's remaining of it right now. And this is a cleanser I was telling you about earlier, the Witch Haze and Rose Water. So back to what's brewing. I go in with a toner after cleansing to ensure that I remove everything that's left on my face. Like, you know, look at impurities, them any makeup residue, whatever it is that may be left there after cleansing, the toner normally helps get rid of that too. And don't forget your neck. A lot of times we ignore our neck area, but it's just as important as our face itself. I'm now going in with my hyaluronic acid and it's from the Ordinary brand. It's almost finished, so I'm just making use of what I have left in the container. And this is the last step in this prepping. Before I do my makeup, I'm going to apply my moisturizer and it's from the Ordinary brand as well. Had I been going outside, I would also apply sunscreen. But since I'm not going anywhere, I'm just going to skip that step for now. I don't always put sunscreen on even if I'm going out. But it's something you should do, especially if you have dark spots on your face that you're trying to get rid of. Now that my face is all set, I'm going to put this primer spray on and hydrate before I do anything else. I could have skipped this step if I wanted to, but I still wanted to put it on. And let me put my disclaimer out there before I continue. I am no makeup artist and by no means is this professional advice. I am just showing you what I do and what works for me. Thank you. I normally start off with my eyebrows and before I do that, I always ensure that the pencil is well sharpened if I'm using a pencil that is. And in this case, I am using a dark brown pencil. My brows will never be perfect, so I just do the best I can do with them and let the magic happen afterwards. I normally draw a line underneath the brow itself, then another on top and make small strokes in between to just shade it out. To further bring the look together, I use a spoolie brush to brush out all the harsh, all the harsh marks that I made earlier with the brow pencil. Don't ask me I'm look like somebody stick me up so I'm so stiff. But I'm using a concealer here to line underneath the brows. This is how I do it. I line under my brows and I use a flat top brush to just line it out in the shape that I want for my brows and just to smooth out the area. And the concealer that I'm using is lighter than my skin tone just to highlight the area and gives it a proper definition. I don't want anything to really blend into back into my skin. I want it to stand out. So that's why I use a lighter concealer. And one of the things you'll find yourself doing a whole lot when doing your makeup is to blend. And everybody knows, say, me lack patience. So sometimes, to be honest with you, I don't spend a whole lot of time doing it as I should. But you really have to blend a whole lot. So do you see the difference there with the brows that is outlined versus the one that isn't so back to what i was saying about blending you have to ensure that you blend in order to get rid of the harsh lines and the whole halo look for those of you who wanted the beginner makeup tutorial i hope i'm being as simple as possible if i'm not explaining myself properly feel free to ask me any questions that you have 
and I'll see how best I can have them addressed. And if this is your first time that you're going to attempt to do your makeup, don't be afraid to make mistakes because mistakes are going to happen. And no matter how long you've been doing makeup for, some things you're just not going to be always good at. In case you make a mess when doing your brows, you can always wipe them off and try again. Or what you can also do is to look on the other brow and see how best you can adjust it to the one that you kind of messed up on. And if it's a case where you can just catch it back and make a new shape, then by all means, you can definitely try that too. To line the top of your brows, you're not going to use a concealer here. You're going to use your foundation. So by doing that, it gives it that blended look into your skin as opposed to that bright halo look that you're going to have on top should you use a concealer. Now that my brows are all done, I'm going to go in with my foundation. And before we get started, I'm just going to have it shaken. Just in case anything is settled, you can get everything gelled together before you apply it on your face. And if you're not sure the amount to put on your face, it's best to put it on your hand. And then you can apply it from there instead of just pouring a whole lot on your face. Then you're left with too much foundation to work with. And by hand, I mean like your hand back area thereabouts. And the foundation I'm working with today is the NYX Born to Glow. And this is in the shade Cappuccino. And as you can see here, my neck is lighter than my face. So it's a challenge sometimes to just ensure that everything is well blended as my face is one of the darkest areas on my body. And as the name of the foundation suggests, it has a glow to it and I have oily skin so i love the fact that it's a bit glowy but at the same time it can work negatively for me in the end as depending on how long i'm gonna be out my skin will get extremely oily to combat that however sometimes i use oil control products and also depending on my mood i may use like the calamine lotion or I know milk of magnesia, some persons are against it, but I use that from time to time to kind of prevent my skin going oily too soon or too much. And like I told you earlier, one of the key things is to blend properly. So we're just going to blend, blend, blend and get that product into the skin so you can have a flawless look when you're done. And this is the OG of all OGs, the LA Girl Pro Concealer. I am using the shade Fawn. I'm going to highlight my under eye area. And you don't need a whole lot for this. You just need a little because the little goes a far away. After you apply your concealer, you're going to let it sit and set for like five minutes thereabouts. And I'm going to highlight my under eye area, my nose bridge, my chin chin yeah i think that's what it's called <laughs> don't pay me any mind my forehead and a little bit near my cheek area there and you don't have to do all this if you're a beginner especially 
you can just highlight your under eyes and your nose bridge and call it a day because it took me a while for me to be all in like this i normally just i never used to even highlight my under eye area even though i have deep inset eyes i used to just put my foundation on and put on some powder and call it you know a day like i like to say clearly but here i am now and then here's the other technical part so it's again if you're a beginner you don't have to go all in like this but i like to contour sometimes to just add a little color to the face or a little pop and i'm using the wonder stick and it's from nyx as well and i contour along my cheekbones my forehead the top of my forehead the edges of my nose bridge if that makes sense you'll see eventually so yeah I prefer using the Black Radiance medium to dark contour palette though. And this is what I'm using for the size of my nose bridge area. Instead of the Wonder Stick I was using earlier. As that is a more creamier texture. Well, not creamier, but it's like a more oily texture than the Black Radiance one. And it's a little bit lighter too. When it's time to blend everything now, I like to go in with my setting spray. And if you don't have a setting spray, you should have one if you're interested in doing makeup any at all. Because this setting spray, well not this particular brand here, but setting sprays overall, they kind of bring your look together. You know, a game changer. Alright, so we're going to blend again. Blend, 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 blend. And you're going to press that concealer in your skin and just tap it in you don't want to spread it all about but just tap it tap it tap it in the areas that it should go and when you're ready for the next side of course you're going to put your setting spray and just blend 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 like you know to do best i'm not sure if you noticed but in this case what i did with the concealer was to take it up into my temple area there but instead of just keeping it on the surface there under my eyes i kind of had it slanted up to the temple area to just give my face a little lift what i would advise you to do again i'm speaking to my beginners here play around with your makeup when you're at home and not going anywhere so you can see you know how things will look if you do xyz and you will find that signature look your go-to look that you do best and just work with it it takes a lot of practice Point to note, I don't think I had said it before, but try not to mix your brushes and your sponges. So if you have a particular one for your contour, your dark shade stuff, do not use it for your concealer. So whatever you use for your um, concealer, again, you're not going to use it for the darker areas, your contour. Because when you have it doubled in every little thing like that, you're going to have the same look across your face and it's going to look pitchy patchy basically and after blending what i like to do is just to use my foundation brush and seal everything just you know have everything set in place because sometimes you may have some little harsh lines the, the sorry the foundation brush helps to just secure that and here i'm using one of those little sponges i got on sheen to put my setting powder in place and you apply setting powder to everywhere you had concealer I'm using the Sasha Buttercup setting powder here. So once again, you only put setting powder to where you had your concealer placed on your face. And when applying, you're going to just press it into the skin so that you can get the most out of it. And another pro tip, try to avoid um, re-dipping into your, your um, setting powder as when you have a little blotch here, a little blotch there, you just want that consistent um, amount on it you don't want to have it looking pitchy patchy here and there and if your eyebrows are looking a bit shine what you can do after you're through putting your setting powder on your face you can just use a sponge and tap on your brows a bit to just absorb some of that oil and that will give it a little matte look
All right, now that we're through applying our setting powder, we're just gonna let that set, as the name suggests, for a bit. And I don't really do baking per se, but I I will leave it there and then do my eyeshadow. And my eyeshadow is very minimal most times. I like neutral colors. So in this case, I'm using this shade brown. I even forgot to show you all the shade, sorry, printer here, but I learn as time goes by. But I'm using the shade brown and I'm going to go in with a kind of burnt darkish orange vibe. I love, 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 love this combo and it's my go-to look majority of the time. And this is the part where my inner clumsy self comes out. I cannot line my eyes like the way I'd like to line it to save my life. So I just do something and work with a vibe. Pure vibes. My wing them, now wing it none at all. Like, them just catch on. <laughs> they just be catching. But, you know, we move. You can't tell me say my wing them, now wing. Them a fly. So let's just pretend they're perfect. Um, this is the other part that I really don't like much. This, I'm using the, the kiss glue to apply these lashes and these are like my bat lashes, like fun lashes. But I kind of like the little extra -ness sometimes, like, you know, I might have a mood, but for most parts, I like the extra -ness. not gonna lie. I like to just let the glue sit dry until it's clear. And in the meantime, I'm going to take off the setting, just brush off the excess setting powder from my face before applying my actual face powder. And I'm using the Fit Me, Maybelline Fit Me, and it's in the shade 355 Coconut. Second, we're just going to blend, blend, blend and press the powder in while you brush away in the same breath, if that makes sense. And I have a couple beauty marks on my face or mole, whatever you call them. I like to accentuate them when I'm done. So this is me putting it out there and applying my lashes that are now dried. And in the video here, I kind of messed up on my, I would say that, left lash. So if you see it look no way, just, just keep it moving. Lashes are always a hit and miss sometimes. So... I normally just apply the glue on my lid itself and put the lash on, but since later I've been doing it the other way around. This is one of my favorite steps. It's to apply my blush and I'm using this one from Juvia's Place, but I love applying my blush. It just adds a pop of color and brightens my face. So I tend to go in with the blush first and next I use my highlighter afterwards and the highlighter varies from depend on my mood which i use but in this case i'm using the one from black radiance in the same contour palette i absolutely love this highlighter Now it's time to put the icing on the cake. You're going to spray your finished look with your setting powder. And point to note, again, do not apply your mascara before you spray your face with your setting powder. Why may I spray spray on a plan for stop? I didn't even realize I used that much. No, man. So yeah, use your mascara after your setting powder. So to avoid it running on your face, as you know how some mascaras are. Not everyone is waterproof. And last but not least, certainly not least, you're going to go in with your lip combo. 
so if you want to use your liner and gloss or you just want to use gloss as it is then you decide whatever floats your boat or whatever goes with the particular moment that you're getting ready for you work with it blend 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 get it all together and just watch it work for you side note y'all can't talk to me my hair can actually go in braids no i did this last night and i am in love so this is a finished look so i can say hair by me makeup by me and what's a braided look without big hoops i i don't like big hoops but you know i'm here for the look thank you guys so much for watching i hope you learned at least one thing throughout this whole process Feel free to leave your comments below and see y'all soon. Take care. Mwah.